60 Cycle Hum features a mix of products that were purchased or provided and content that is a mix of sponsored, paid, unpaid, and Patreon funded. Use your eyes, ears, and common sense to come to your own conclusions. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and I've got a box of stuff here from Pigtronics. They've got some mini pedals here. One of the privileges of being a demo guy is that you don't always get stuff in its final commercial packaging. <laughs> that seems to be the case here. They're all individually wrapped in bubble wrap. I've got the Constellator. Now, I've intentionally avoided looking into these because I want to have a fun, like, first impressions kind of uh, experience here. And I think you guys will enjoy it too. The Space Rip. I have no idea what any of these do yet. <laughs> and finally, the Moon Pool. All right, what do we have here? The Moon Pool's got three switches on it. All three of them are three-way switches. That's a lot of options. Four knobs, phase speed, trim speed, depth, and sense. Interesting. There's a lot of options crammed into this little pedal. Uh, space rip, rate, tune, mix, sub, shape, and octave. Some kind of octave pedal? I don't know what rate is all about. Interesting. I have... <laughs> I have no idea what that'll be. Constellator, time, mix, mod, repeats, and feel. Time and mix and repeats makes me think that this is a delay pedal. So what order should I go here? This is tremolo and phase. I always put tremolo at the end of pedal chains, but I always put phase at the beginning. <laughs> so that's tricky. Because I'm assuming neither of these are drive pedals, I'll put it at the end uh, with the delay in the middle and then this octave thing at the beginning of the chain. <laughs> Please, I guess I should start with the first in the chain, the space rip. A rip in space. I'm already intrigued. Oh, I really like the knobs on here. They're like round and fat in the middle with deep grooves in them. I've never seen these knobs before. Usually these mini style pedals have just tiny little plastic things. That feels really substantial. I mean, it's a small detail, but uh, it feels nice. I appreciate the small details. Okay, here we go. What am I gonna get out of this pedal? Octave. <laughs> some sort of synth. Let's uh, bring the mix up. Ooh, it gets freaky with some like double string bends. Whoa. All right, shape gives like a different flavor. Kind of more distorted when it's pressed in. And then octave goes from a high octave to a low octave, obviously. 
Oh, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. So there's some kind of modulation going on that the rate is affecting. And then tune. It seems like when you put it in a sweet spot with a tune, that modulation gets smoothed out. Then you go outside of that and you can really hear that modulation. Maybe it's like a center point adjustment or something for that synth pitch modulation that's going on. And when you have it just in tune, like it's not going anywhere. So you don't hear that rate. Or maybe it's something completely different. <laughs> I almost never mess around with synth pedals. So it's a completely different experience for me. Actually sounds almost like a synth trumpet. That's a much more controlled sort of sound than I was getting earlier. It can still get wild though. Dang. That sounds pretty great, guys. All right, we'll do that octave button again. So the sub knob controls the sub octave. I had it all the way out of the mix on the left there. Then you turn it up and obviously. I'm gonna have to come back to this one with the baritone. Oh, that is so dirty and nasty.
this is why I love doing the unboxings. <laughs> and when there's a pedal that does crazy stuff, this is a fun experience. All right, the Constellator now. I'll come back to this with the baritone. You know that I will. All right, the Constellator. I think this is a delay. It does red light and it does blue light. Okay, so it sounds like the feel switch, the feel button here controls the speed of modulation. Mod obviously controls the mix of modulation. Obviously some kind of analog delay here. Sounds pretty decent. Let's crank those repeats and make some spaceship noises, huh? It's gonna fart my speakers out for sure. It went crazy low on that. Let's try that again with more room to move into high pitched sounds. That's fun. That is deeply, deeply fun. I like that fast modulation too. It does the analog delay thing where on a really long time, the max time on it, it gets pretty dirty. Yeah, it holds up with about one and a half to two clean repeats, and then dumps into that murky, murky analog sort of sound. Which is what you want out of an analog delay. That slow modulation uh, is pretty rich, but it's not over the top wackadoodle like I've experienced in some analog delays. It's on that edge of like usable and too wild to be used most of the time. There's some analog delays I've messed with that have modulations that just go full like 
like pitch bending weirdness. And this is flirting with that, but not going all the way there. Like I bet if you pull back the mix quite a bit, it'll feel more like a normal chorus. Yeah. Yeah, it mixes with your dry signal to give you this chorusing effect. Hard click on there, so I'm not expecting any kind of secret tap tempo. If I hold this, does anything weird happen? Nope. No secrets to be held unless I'm really missing something here. To me, it sounds like a good little analog delay. I think that the spaceship noises are very musical. I could have a lot of fun messing with that. It gets very, very low. If you're at full volume, I might be worried about freaking out speakers, really flubbing those speakers if you rack that time knob the wrong direction with a full mix. <laughs> <laughs> you might be into those kinds of self-destructive kind of possibilities though. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Let's check out the range of the speed control before I move on to the next thing. That's all the way fast. Doing a very fast doubling thing. slap back thing there. Ooh, I really slopped that one up. Sounds about like 200 milliseconds at noon there. So all the way up, I'm betting this is going to be, you know, your standard kind of like 450 millisecond analog delay. Yeah, that feels about right. It has that high end sizzle when those repeats break up on the longer settings. You hear that? That like lo-fi thing going on? up right about there, right about noon. Too brutal. Apparently a phaser and a tremolo with a bunch of switches down here. Dynamic, dynamic switch, and then a switch with trim on the top, phase on the bottom, and a middle position. So I'm assuming you can select one or the other or a combination of the two with different dynamic, maybe speed ramping settings for each side. Let's try it. Yeah, 
Yeah, some kind of phaser and tremolo together. <laughs> So that's depth, and this is sense. I have a feeling that's the sensor for the dynamic functions here, which are not selected because they're in the middle position with a down or up. That's an interesting combination though. It kind of reminds me of the old DOD vibro thing. You remember those? All right, let's try it with just the tremolo. It's lightning fast. Decently choppy with the depth all the way up without being a full square wave. There's no volume control here, but it feels like it's doing a very slight boost when you engage it. Which is important. Because tremolo, it essentially cuts your signal in half, and I feel like you need extra volume to bring you back into the mix when you engage a tremolo. So many tremolos that I've tried over the years, uh, they don't they don't adjust for that. So having a little bit of a boost can be helpful. Still, I kind of wish that it had a standalone volume control. All right, now the phaser. I'm assuming it's just a one knob phaser here. The sense has got to be for the dynamic switches. Yeah, I'm not hearing any difference there. fast, just like the tremolo. Plenty slow too. <laughs> All right, let's try combining them again and exploring. No, you know what? Let's let's do the dynamic thing. I'm assuming this is the dynamic control for the phaser on the left here. There we 
y'all. So in the up position, it increases speed with your playing dynamics. The sense knob comes into play here. I'm not totally sure what the function of that is, but it is interacting with how it responds. So it seems like somewhere around this range is where you're going to get the most dynamic range out of the sense control. You turn it up and it seems stuck in the faster speed longer. You turn it below this and it seems permanently stuck in the slow speed. So this seems to be the sweet spot for demonstrating this right now anyways. Let's try the down position. <laughs> Yeah, it goes from slow to fast in that position. I'm assuming it does the same sort of stuff on the tremolo setting. I need a tune again. It might just be all this modulation, but I've been doing some crazy bends. Thanks to that synth. Yeah, not a big surprise, my B string was out. question is what happens when you combine the trim and the phase and they're going opposite directions so one going from fast to slow and one going from slow to fast this could get interesting yeah <laughs> yeah it does like there's these little hiccups and crashes that happen I feel like you'd have to spend some real time dialing this in if you have something very specific you want to happen there. Otherwise, you just kind of set it and forget it and let it kind of take control and do the wild thing it wants to do while you're playing. Otherwise, you set it to a much more like standard normal setting, just your face, just your tremolo, or just a standard mix of the two. Or maybe you just have the trim speed ramping and the face speed be a constant. <laughs> There's some, uh, there's some fun creative possibilities there. I feel like I've got to think about this one a little bit harder. Like this one is just instantaneous. Like, oh, now we're getting crazy. This is a delay, so. You 
you know what to expect out of it. This one, I feel like I've got to be a bit more intentional with it. As promised, let's do the baritone. Is this gonna wreck my amps? <laughs> Is this a dangerous thing for me to do to throw extra low end through this synth? Try pulling the mix back a bit on that. It's a little bit pickier with the baritone versus the guitar. Uh, it folds over and gets freaked out on the wrong settings with the baritone. Yeah, if you're playing an <laughs> extended range instrument, baritone, seven string, eight string, bass guitar, it's gonna get a little bit trickier to dial this in. tweaked this thing out of tune, didn't I? How did I even manage that? three of them I think there's uh, certainly some merit here this is wild this is just crazy I I don't know how I would use this in a mix but I think with sounds that crazy and that out there 
things that you're not going to use likely as you're always on sort of sound. It's always fun to have those sorts of things contained in a miniature pedal size. It's more convenient for your board to have that wild and crazy sound that's not taking up a ton of space. So if you're seeking out, you know, synth sounds as like a once in a while sort of thing, I think there's no reason why you wouldn't want to have this be a part of what you're looking at when you're shopping for something like that. It doesn't take up a ton of space. There's a lot of controls here, four knobs and two option switches for a mini pedal. Typically, I'm, I'm used to encountering mini pedals for the Affordable Board uh, series, which these are not, by the way, um, that are very limited in their sounds, very vanilla in their sounds. And these mini pedals are not vanilla <laughs> at all. There's a lot going on here. Even a seemingly fairly basic analog delay, you have two different speeds here. Uh, you have a modulation that gets to the edge of very wacky, uh, but gives you plenty of usable range there. I really like the musical nature of the spaceship sounds, the way the time knob reacts to being uh, racked back and forth. Uh, it does a very kind of normal and expected ideal, could be the term used, analog delay sound where it's clearer on shorter settings. It gets more lo-fi and more compressed and dirtier at the higher delay settings. That's all very normal stuff. It's expected. It's a feature. It's what people want analog del delays to do. And then this thing, this is creative. Tremolo and phaser ramping at different speeds or the same speeds if you want from slow to fast, fast to slow, combining in different ways, or you could select it to be trim or just phase. I'd have a tough time deciding where I would want this on my board. Cause like I said, I usually put phaser before drives. I usually put tremolo after drives. That's tricky. But say you've already got a tremolo or a phaser on your board and you need an extra option. It's small, it's wild. I, mean, I can recommend them all. I didn't find anything about them where I was like, oh no, no, stay away from this. It really comes down to your needs. It comes down to what you want to explore with your sonic soundscapes and whatnot. But I think these are useful, fun little pedals. What do you guys think though? Tell me your opinions down below. Your opinion matters to me. If you're interested in any of these, which one would you pick? Which one would you buy? Uh, maybe you'd buy them all. Maybe you wouldn't buy any of them. Uh, if you have negative opinions, feel free to let them loose in the comment section. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude, nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Buy a shirt if you're naked and stay grounded. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.